burning the boats is really about how to go all in and completely surrender and submit to your purpose, right? And so this call is a perfect illustration. If you looked at, at Maslow's hierarchy of needs, like you're all at the top, you know what I mean? You're, you're self-actualized and you're now giving back. So what I love about this, um, it really illustrates what Burn the Boats is truly about. It's not about financial success. It's about realizing your destiny, right? And what, what, however that manifests. And most people's destiny is not to make a buck. It's to use that buck for something better. So I'm honored to spend time with you. My book is called Burn the Boats. It's my life's work. Put my heart and soul into it. You're doing amazing work. really needs no introduction but here we go renowned serial uh, entrepreneur and growth equity investor as co-founder and ceo of private investment firm res ventures he's also the executive fellow at harvard business school where he co-teaches the course moving beyond direct to consumer and just recently really excited to announce that he actually just released his first book burn the boats it's going to be published by william morrow in 2023 where matt goes deep into his operating experience over his 25 plus year career and helps founders navigate complex situations in order to reach their full potential ladies and gentlemen super honored to welcome to our session mr matt higgins matt thank you for joining us oh thanks for having me <laughs> sakari i didn't get a chance did i say it right by the way i haven't gotten a chance to you hear. said it perfect with some okay. surprise a lot of people don't so yeah pleasure to meet you matt nice to um, meet you. thank you to ashley john and and you too matt like for just being so vulnerable and open um about some of the experiences and those changing points and things like that that's awesome um so a little bit about me my name is kari smithwick i'm chef and founder of noble promise um you know i'm 28 years old i'm from long island new york so for the past like over a decade what I've town, been, what town? amityville yeah. amityville like the like the movie Oh yeah, on the southern state, I guess. Right? Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. They're like we're neighbors. Yeah. So, <laughs> so um, yeah. For the past decade, I've cooked at some of the world's best restaurants. All from starting off at just McDonald's when I was 16, 15 years old. Um, from there, you know, went to school up at Delhi. I thought McDonald's was gonna be like my entire career. I thought that's what it was for me. That's actually why I went to college because it was right next door to McDonald's. I got introduced to fine dining from taking a club at a uh, school called Scarfier Club, where they actually pay for a fine dining experience. So we went to a Michelin star restaurant and like, you know, they pull out your chair, they crumb your table. I thought like fine dining, high level food was like Red Lobster and like Cheesecake Factory and stuff like that. So it changed my life forever. I was like, this is incredible. So I went down a rabbit hole and worked at Murray, which at the time had two stars. I worked at 11 Madison Park. I went wow. to Europe. I went to Europe. Um, you know, I got my first Michelin star when I was 24 years old at a restaurant called Yukio, um, where it was a chef's table, about 15 seats or so. Um, after working at EMP, um, I got burnt out a little bit. I did like a black chef's food tour to learn more about my culture, my roots, and things like that. Worked out a year, came back, and started Noble Promise. So it started off as a pop up series um, where I just worked around the city and things like that. We turned like high income housings that weren't being utilized in the market um, mm -hmm. to our restaurant concept per se. So what Noble Promise means is basically my name Sakari in Swahili, which means you have a promise in future and keep to your word. Mm -hmm. So fast forward, I started really indulging in Gary after the restaurant had to close. Cause I was like, man, people love food. And like, even if you put great food, it doesn't matter per se, if nobody knows about it. And if you have to close down the restaurant, right? So I started learning about business marketing, et cetera, followed Gary and, you know, got into basketball cards, Etc. and then got back into NFTs, um, into NFTs, where I started my own NFT collection um, with my friends, right, called Noble Promise Studios. And what we wanted to do basically was create a platform for emerging talent, right? Like something that I kept coming, problem that I kept running into was just like, I feel like you don't need gatekeepers anymore, you know? And I didn't want other people to own my content. Like right now I'm on Hell's Kitchen um, this season, 21 with uh, Gordon Ramsay. So every Thursday, like it comes out and things like that, which is amazing. But like they own all the content and it's just always a very like selective matter, right? So I was like, you know what? I'm going to build my own platform. I'm going to help my friends come up together with me. I'm gonna build my own food network, right? A food network meets revolt in a sense. Um, so that's really what I've been doing um, mm -hmm. using NFTs. And, you know, I came out with my NFT project and nobody gave a fuck. 
right? Like, who was I? Doesn't matter. And then I was like, okay, well, I, I remember Pharrell said something at VCon that was really special, which was like, your talent is the unlock to everything else, right? So I dug deep and I was like, okay, let's pivot. So I just started creating food products. So I created a cyber green juice using a world of women uh, NFT, right? And it's been really successful. They just came out an article at the New Yorker. They just ordered like 500 juices from Miami where I just came back from Art Basel. They ordered another 500 NFT NYC, et cetera. So now I'm figuring out ways to scale that. Um, I just launched a banana pudding, right? As well with a board ape community and things like that. That's been successful and they actually won in at VCon and things like that. But the thing that fuels me, right, is for me, you know, my father passed away last year and he was like my, it was my best friend. I never lost anybody close to me, right? Um, it was terrible. Mm. And I remember like finding him and obviously this whole entire tragic story, whatever the case is, but I remember finding a, a box of like all these books, right? And all these letters and things like that. And he just really was passionate about it. He didn't curse, he didn't smoke. Um, he was a police officer in like Rikers Island. He used to be in a gang back in the day. He used to be like security for African Mabada. I like, grew up in hip hop, all these cool things. And um, he was just so well composed, a very knowledgeable person. And he was like, he tried to eat healthy for the most part. He took vitamins, all these things. So I read all these books and I'm like, man, the reason why he didn't drink or didn't smoke or didn't eat, eat meat or any of these things because healthy, right? And talking about powerlessness, right? I remember my grandmother got sick of like two years ago and I felt so helpless. And I was like, man, I just went on through these crazy experiences as a chef, right? And I can't do anything. I don't have any money. I, I, what can I do? I was like, well, I can cook, right? So I started researching like vitamins, foods, like what are some things that I can give her? Because power, I just felt helpless. I was like, I can't do anything. Same thing with my father. So after the passing of him, I was like, you know what? Like everything that I'm going to create moving forward has to have a purpose for just feeding the body and soul, right? So for the cyber green juice was a delicious product, but it's healthy and we use spinach and we use whole foods and we put it into our communities, right? With the banana pudding, it's totally vegan and it has no sugar in it as well. We just use the natural sugar from the banana. Um, so for me, just telling stories through food is really what my, my movement for me is about and just helping everybody come together. Um, I remember I was writing some notes, but you talked about burn the boat. And for me, what that means is just like kind of built in in front of the world. Cause like people start giving me money. Right. And it's just another level of like responsibility. Right. So not only responsibility I feel for my father, but responsibility I feel from people like investing in me and saying, Hey, Scar, I support you, your vision, who you are, what you're doing. And so I was like, man, like this level, like this pressure is just keeps me, it just keeps me kind of on flare, you know? Um, so I, you know, last time I met with Gary, I asked to be on his team. So right now I'm like shadowing on his team directly. And one thing he speaks about is osmosis, which is really interesting. He was just talking about absorbing everything just by being in it. Um, and, you know, Glenn Stern talks about finding your audience first, which was really interesting. Um, and I just feel like I've been finding my audience using different intellectual properties. So anyway, I say all that to say to give you context, but I think my question is when scaling, right? And looking for strategic partners and VCs and all that type of things. Like what are some of the things that I, I should be looking for um because right now i'm bootstrapping i'm using like my own money like <laughs> zero money zero fun so um which has been incredible i've really been falling in love with the journey more say right like um and understanding like the slow and steady kind of wins the race so it's been fun first of all amazing an amazing career and tracker can i ask you how old you are roughly if you don't mind i'm, tw saying? I'm 28 i'm 28. I'm trying to see where you are you know and, and the other how far out you are and whatnot um so a few thoughts <laughs> like yeah. your life can go in so many different directions and i and and it sounds sounds like you have an abundance mindset like you're just like this is amazing i'm taking it all in right H however I, I i do think that we are happiest when we are intentional right so I, I need to delve a little bit deeper as to what does winning look like for you like is winning have a number does winning mean you're running an enterprise of a certain amount of scale and you're a mega multi-millionaire because when i hear you talk and I was, you know, I was, if you were like a wind up doll, I'm like, okay, I, I could send you into creating a restaurant empire. I could, you know, you could become a media property. CPGs in the mix. You seem to like get excited about product. You know what I mean? But first I need to know what does winning look like if, you know, 10 years from now. So what winning looks like is for me is like, we changed my dad. I don't know if you can see this into the mascot for our company. Right. Mm. And for me, I want to use him to, basically educate people about healthy eating, right? So what winning for me is like leaving this planet in a better state by just having people eat better food, 
right? That's the long-term vision, whether we use intellectual properties, right, or kids' cookbooks, whether, and obviously things change and things like that, whether we use healthy products um, or me as a mascot cooking and fine dining or whatever, whatever it takes, but I just want to leave an impact on this earth. That's what, to me, winning looks like. And for me, I was like, I, going back to something I talked about with finding your audience first, right? I was like, well, how do I big, how do I build the biggest brand in order to in order to leave the biggest impact? And for me, the answer to that question was, well, if I can help other people showcase their work and their art and their talent and give them opportunities while I'm going through this journey of life, well, I think then I can build the biggest brand, right? Whether it's I feel like hip hop rules the world, right? That's one of my theses. So if I can showcase emerging talent of all of all shades, whether it's up and coming chefs or whether it's a hip hop artist or R and B artist or whoever, if we could all build this thing together in this movement, well, then I could build the biggest brand, which can leave the biggest impact, which can help kids eat healthier, which can help people in the community have fresher food, better food experiences, just the overall better life for the black and brown community where I came from. Because going back to when it changed my life and I got introduced to this thing, I was like, man, this is incredible. Why don't more people know about this? So that's mm-hmm. that to me is what winning is about. It's not it's not so much about a number. For me, it's just freedom. Good. So love that because I always say to folks, if you if you can't fully articulate your why, your why is what sustains you, right? Like uh, when when you get depressed, tired, fatigued, things aren't working out. So your why is very crystal clear that you want to leave a mark on encouraging people to eat healthy and provide better options. So you have that down. And then the question is, I agree with you on branded storytelling. Branded storytelling is the future of everything. And so having a brand and storytelling machine can be deployed any way you want. So all the energy you put into creating more heat, creating more brand, telling your story, no matter what direction you choose to take it in, it's going to you know play out. So I guess my, my only advice to you is somebody who's incredibly talented, has their why down. I know what my why is. I know I want to leave the earth creating this impact. I know I believe in storytelling and I'm great at it and I have a great story because you have a fucking amazing story, right? The only area that I've seen people stumble when they're like you, you know, like drowning in opportunity <laughs> Is, they, is that it, it's it's hard and painful to eliminate things, but I feel in talking to you the need to winnow something and say like, this is going, even if you sequence it, this is going to be the thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to go all in on CPG and do a suite of products products under a certain brand and I'm going to build in for, and all my storytelling and all the NFT behavior and everything I'm doing, even following Gary is all about amplifying that because it's almost like, you know, having a very large magnifying glass that's shining that sunbeam right on that thing. And I feel like for you, because you look, you're a chef too, you could do restaurant, like there, there, you'll have to sort of pick, pick a thing to direct all that energy to, and it'll be exponentially more successful. So, you know, that's why I asked you the financial question is, you know, restaurants are terrible financially, right? But like, yeah. there's, you know, for, I'm partners with David Chang and Momofuku and I love it and I love restaurants and I've been to Noma. I was just with the president of Noma the other day because it's the best restaurant in the world, you know. However, as a business, CPG, you know, better, scalable, the CPG, consumer products, goods for everybody listening. Uh, CPG can better take advantage of the of the storytelling, right? Because now anybody can walk into a Publix or a Whole Foods and buy your product. So I just think with you, you know, the why, you got your why, the how probably needs to be crystallized. and and maybe not, maybe you do all, all five things at one time. I, I just think that if you've already got early indications of a successful product, I would meditate a bit on like, can I do a whole line of these? You know what I mean? And like, kind of go from there. Your restaurant could probably be the, the brand halo. Like if you think about Rayos, you know, Rayos has that, what, only two locations, but they're but their business at Whole Foods with the sauce is worth like a billion dollars, right? You know, same thing with Tate's. I own Magnolia Bakery. We're launching a suite of, uh, of consumer products because we're taking advantage of the brand halo. And we're taking advantage of that Bleecker Street store where there's lines around the block, but I don't want to open more stores. Uh, you know, we want to sell more product through storytelling and whatnot. So, you know, it's good to be you, I guess is my, is my short answer. It's like, what do you, you know, and man, you can reject all this discipline. I just, I just feel like if I was advising you, I'd want to say, let's, let's, let's amplify one of these activities and really fully commit to it. You know, does that make any sense? Um, no, that makes that complete sense. You know, something I talked about, Carla, and I know we're running out of time. Something I talked about, Carla, last last time from Chase was just focusing on one thing. And she was like, you know, one thing is very old school. Try to focus on three things or like something, you know, but the, oh, I think that- Clear, because I don't want to, if you were you, if you were to, if you were to scrutinize my life, like, well, let me get this straight, Matt. You teach <laughs> at Harvard, visit school, you have a TV show, you have a book coming out, whatever. But all those things are amplifying my very one thing, if that makes yeah. sense. 
Yeah. They're very, very, very intense. There is nothing about these that's not highly intentional. So when I would, my advice to you is like, I didn't tell you to stop doing all the content. I also don't think it's a bad idea for you to have your own restaurant because that's your that's your showpiece. That's your experiential component. Yeah. I'm just saying, pick the pick the thing that all the other things are amplifying toward, and don't confuse that with your why. Why is different than your how. Your why is very clear. I want to leave my mark. I want to you know put that over here. That way it doesn't cloud your brain. The how is the thing I'm saying, right? Like what's going to be the what's the tip of your spear, frankly, for which everything else drafts behind, right? And it's interesting that you made a couple of products that resonate because you know products are the most scalable part of a food vision, right? And some people have it in them, some people don't, right? Running a restaurant would just really hard. So that that's it. That's all I was saying. But definitely the takeaway is not to do one thing. It's to do 19 things serving one thing, you know. Perfect. Understood. Okay. All right. I love that. <laughs> Tell me to stop teaching at Harvard and all the other crazy shit I do. Because people are always like, you do all these things. I was like, yeah, but it's very, very clear what I'm doing. Even the TV show, even the even the profile is all about one day having your attention. Doesn't mean I have a, I'm never going to run for off. You know what I mean? I want your attention so I can redirect it to the things I care about. You know what I mean? And a lot of those things are mostly about human rights and subjugation. But I, but I know if I lecture you, it's boring. So I need to have credibility and <laughs> authority write a book, be on a TV show, he's on Shark Tank, he's built a big empire. Now I'm an aspirational person. Now maybe you'll listen to me the next time, you know, people are stuck in Iraq, you know what I mean? Or whatever. Again, I know some of this sounds so grandiose, but it really isn't. Like, well, you ingenuity, creativity, and money and empathy can do a lot to help somebody. So that's my, that's my why, not my how. Does that make sense? Right. And everything else is my how. Love it. What a fun conversation. What, how great that Gary unleashes this collection in the world and now attracts this energy onto this call. You know, everybody doing great stuff. Sip it with Zakari.